the more human will be. This is Cisco. Action. Camera one, zoom out. Ready, camera two. Take two. to this edition of uh, Cisco Chat. I'm Prashant Chennai. I have the pleasure of uh, leading Cisco's enterprise networks and our developer platform uh, product and solutions marketing. And I'm really excited today to talk about our SD-WAN and security announcement that we made a couple of weeks at Partner Summit in Las Vegas. Um, so it's a hot topic in the industry uh, today and there's a lot of demand uh, with our customers. Um, in, in terms of securing the SD-WAN fabric, right? So, and then the whole reason behind that. So to unveil what this all means and what our announcements means, I've had the pleasure of having two awesome people here, Kareli Sankar, who's uh, joining us from RTP. She's the technical marketing engineer. Hey, Kareli, how are you doing? Hey, Prashant, doing great. Good, and uh, Barry Fisher, who's our awesome security product marketing expert here. Hey, Barry, can you hear us? Yeah. Thanks. Awesome, cool. So you're gonna have a very really awesome uh, interactive conversation here, but the most important part is you joining the conversation. So feel free to uh, ask any questions and put it on the chat on Facebook. And I'm gonna take those questions live uh, and uh, between Corelli, Barry and I, we should be able to answer most of those, all right? So let's get this party started. Uh, so one of the key things here is why SD-WAN and security? Uh, why is this match made in heaven, right? So people know about software-defined WAN, right? So the whole reason of why WAN was created was to connect users in branch and a few campus to applications which predominantly reside in the data center. The world has obviously changed a lot since Amazon Web Service a few years back, right? So now you have applications in multiple clouds users pretty much mobile, on-prem and off-prem, and in the middle you have this awesome wide area network. So there are a few challenges from a security perspective that this multi-cloud environment and a diverse user and location environment presents. So you need a pretty unique and cohesive security approach to the SD-WAN fabric. So let's start off with Corelli uh, U. So as I said, SD-WAN has been on top of mind, but security and SD-WAN are now on everybody's mind. So what has Cisco done and what is Cisco's approach to securing this SD-WAN fabric that we announced a few weeks back? Cisco has sweetened SD-WAN with security. I've traveled the world this whole year, started starting last October, met with hundreds of customers and partners, and everyone said that they needed a single pane of glass to be able to provision manage, monitor, report, as well as troubleshoot. Prashant, we got that single pane of glass for That's them. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, this fantastic UI that we brought in. We serve four different use cases, compliance, guest access, direct cloud access, as well as direct internet access. We have four different uh, security features for bringing in for Very this cool. end uh, release, and that will be our enterprise firewall. Uh, I intrusion prevention, URL filtering, all three are on box capabilities, and we're also integrating that with uh, our DNS web layer security. Which is our Cisco umbrella. So this is fantastic news, right? I mean, just to kind of reiterate what Corelli said, we had a single pane for SD-WAN, that's our remanaged platform, and now we got all of our best of breed security functionalities that Corelli Absolutely. mentioned, and help you manage, monitor, provision, uh, through the same dashboard. So that really provides that simplicity 
while giving you the flexibility and control that our customers want when they deploy security. So this is this is awesome news. Uh, must be music to our um, SD WAN customers there. So uh, one of the things that always comes is Cisco is known as a networking vendor, but uh, it's it's a I think a, not a well kept secret, but Cisco is the number one security vendor in the market too, right? So so Barry, uh, to you. What is that approach that Corelli mentioned, um, the SD-WAN approach to security that makes the Cisco approach so special and unique compared to some of the security vendors out there uh, who also kind of try to get into the SD-WAN space? Yeah, for sure. I mean, adding on to everything that Corelli said, you are on this journey to make your users access apps so there's high availability, high agility, high performance. And if you don't architect security to be embedded in the way the network works, you're bolting something on, you might have complexity for the admins to set that up right. You haven't like, you know, matched the specs from your router to the bandwidth that's required to inspect files, inspect application flows, inspect that the user is getting the right level of data access that they should. And then having a really threat-centric approach to know is an attacker trying to bypass the you know access rules that we put in place. And so Cisco was one of the originators of the firewall. We have mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of customers using our firewalls, both the uh, older versions and then the next gen version. This is all pretty much though a standard enterprise firewall where it needs to be application and identity aware so that we're not basing things on policies and IPs. We've been doing this for over a decade and that yeah. technology is now baked in to the router so you're not having a two box approach because think about it, you're gonna have, if you're a retailer or hospitality, you're gonna have hundreds if not thousands of locations and you have had all of the security as a stack in your DMZ, which has had multiple appliances, multiple UIs. So we want to have all the best of breed capabilities, but not the challenge that there's too many moving parts. So yeah. we're taking all that enterprise firewall, we're putting that in the box, and then the intrusion prevention is based on the acquisition of SourceFire, and the intelligence is from Cisco Talos. It yeah. is the largest commercial, meaning non-government threat intelligence team in the world. And what's important to think about from a security perspective is that the attackers have all these vectors. And while SD-WAN security is focused on the network fabric and the way that intrusion might get into the network or users on your network might be pulling down malware or phishing, you also have email and endpoints and the ability for us to take the telemetry from every attack mm -hmm. vector, understand how the attackers get in, move across, laterally across our networks, and build that into then the intelligence that runs in our intrusion prevention technologies is super critical to have more effectiveness than just if you were um, a single vendor that was gonna attach onto your SD-WAN deployment. Yeah, so uh, I think that, that's, a, that's a great point, Barry, that you mentioned at the end, right? Because I think what makes us truly unique is, is that trifecta combination, right? So we have that uh, most widely deployed network with our SD-WAN portfolio and our ISR portfolio. We have an over a million of these routers and we have a pretty broad portfolio there. And now we are bringing the best of breed security integration, whether it's the firewall, the URL filtering, the IPS, which we've been tried and tested with customers, small scale and large scale for 10 years seamlessly integrated and to sweeten the deal as Corelli said we got like the Talos threat intelligence now sharing that information about threat into this so the combination of three working seamlessly and holistically and giving our customers a single pane of glass to manage that is awesome and it's very hard to replicate uh, with our customers so I want to get into the very details. hard to replicate and I'd like to expand on that point Prashan competitors we do have quite a few yeah. but no, nowhere near the scale that we can provide, nowhere near the industry's top efficacy backed by our talos like Barry pointed out, nothing like that. It's yeah. very slow to deploy. Our zero touch, you can bring a device on in under 15 minutes. Yeah, that's that one thing I'm in, gonna ask you. That is because, incredible. Yeah, th this is pretty interesting because we, we talk about this and I wanna get into the details of this integration this is a technical deep dive here so let's go into each one of these and i want to end with what does that mean to our customers right because it's all about like the efficiency the efficacy uh, the operational savings so 
let's talk about these integrations. So you, you mentioned four key things, right? And yes. you have our Victality Manage, and you mentioned a stateful and application aware firewall. So yes. tell us about how we integrate that and what functionality uh, we bring to that dashboard. And we go through, we can go through each one of um, the remaining three after that. Okay. Yeah. We've always had a stateful firewall. Now what we did, we married that firewall with our application visibility engine, SDABC, mm -hmm. to even provide this first packet detection of the applications. Now we're able to identify applications, drop what we don't need, and allow the rest of the applications. Not just that, tied to the intrusion prevention, like Barry mentioned, it comes in to us with the source file acquisition backed by our Talos. This could be implemented both in IPS, which is inline, or mm -hmm. IDS, which can just show you what is going on, not necessarily drop the packets when a signature gets fired. Not just that, vManage centrally goes out to Cisco.com at a set interval and looks for package updates. And once it sees a new package update put out by our Talos organization, it downloads it and deploys it to all of the routers that are provisioned on we manage. The mm -hmm. next feature we're bringing in is the on-box capability for URL filtering. Mm -hmm. We bring in about 82 different categories that we could pick and choose to block or allow, as well as block or allow based on web reputation. Now, to add on top of that, we provide custom blacklist and whitelist, which gets filtered before we process the categories. Now with that solution, we also provide a custom block page that customers can configure. May it be a message that they relate to the end users when they go to a block page, or type an 800 number for them to call the help desk if they see a page that is blocked. So those three are on-box capabilities. And the cloud integration feature is the DNS web layers security, this is security provided at the DNS layer. We don't have to look within the HTTP or HTTPS packets. We intercept the DNS packets. It doesn't matter which destination it goes to. It could go to an ISP provided one or a Google mm -hmm. DNS server. We intercept that. We change the destination IP address, encrypt the packet, add our internal private IP address of the client and other device identity, ship the packet to Umbrella where it knows where the DNS packet is going to and based on enforcement, if an Umbrella subscription is purchased, then they send the response back. If yep. the URL that they're attempting to go to is supposed to be blocked, then they send their own block page IP address. So. Um, if the client opens up a page, they're going to see administratively prohibited. If the category is allowed, then they send the end web service IP address so the client can happily load the web page and browse away. So those are the four features that we're bringing into Viptela's vManage UI to provide us that single pane of glass. That's that's very cool. and and. I think the important part here is you mentioned at the beginning um, of, of our chat that uh, all of these are functionalities. We've really thought about from a use case perspective, right? Like a lot right. of industries have like compliance related use case for which they need to secure their SD-WAN uh, fabric. They have right. guest access, they have direct internet access for their SaaS application. So we've taken those and provided the workflow from that perspective, whether it's providing stateful and application a firewall, URL, or IPS. So that's free. Uh, it is, it is intent based. It is all intent based. They click the button to create a new security policy. We show all of the U4 use cases that I talked about. Based on those use cases, we show the workflow, which is very intuitive, very simple to configure. You bring in a seven year old that seven-year-old will be able to configure those policies very easily. So we've yeah. simplified it to that extent. We've tried to automate as much as possible, and it is a phenomenal UI. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, we are playing ping pong here between Corelli and Barry, so let me go back to Barry here. So, I mean, yeah. you, you talked about, we've been leaders in the SD in the security market for, for quite, quite a while, right? And these products stand on their own. And the interesting thing is, the, the what I call the SD-WAN 1.0 a few years back versus what we're trying to do right now is drastically different in terms of security. 
So what has changed, Barry, in the market that has resulted in security being such a critical factor uh, in the SD-WAN space? Are there certain use cases uh, that you can talk about, like how things have changed that required this level of uh, increased threat protection in the SD-WAN um, industry? Sure, yeah, actually, well, and I'll kind of tackle even the, the last question combined mm -hmm. with this one, because I think what's really important is thinking about what's the right security in the right place. You mm -hmm. have this technology we're pushing down to the edge of the branch, which is gonna enable the SD-WAN routing, and you're connecting often up to the cloud or directly to the internet. So you have this opportunity to do the security in the cloud. And one of the changes is that a lot of the web traffic is encrypted. So to be able to see the specific URL, or to be able to see the specific payload, the file that the user is requesting from Box or from some other place, you're gonna to need to be able to proxy and decrypt the traffic. Well, when it comes to decryption, that can really hobble on-premises piece of hardware. You have to yeah. increase the memory, increase the CPU dramatically to be able to scale. But you can do that elastically via a cloud security solution where you're not getting charged based on how much traffic you're having to decrypt. Basically, if you have X number of users that you want to protect, that's all you have to you know, license. And so that complement that you can leverage the cloud security that Corelli already explained that we automatically point to, to do that decryption, look at uh, through an AV engine, through our advanced malware protection technologies, to do all that without having to worry that you're going to be slowing down your on-premises box. Mm -hmm. But then that's going to be when you have these users and devices inside your branch connecting out to the internet. Yeah. That sort of cloud security can't do anything about unsolicited inbound requests from somewhere out in the internet to your branch that maybe is running IoT at the edge, other sort of web facing applications that you need to be able to stop the inbound threats and that's where you need to have the intrusion prevention a lot of the competitors are only doing one or the other. They're like, hey, we bundle everything in the router or we do everything in the cloud. And if it does everything in the router, it's not gonna scale well. If it does everything in the cloud, it's not gonna stop these inbound threats. And additionally, yeah. it's not just about inbound. You have, we, we live in an era that we have to presume that even with the best intelligence, it will block 99 plus percent, but that is some stuff can get through. And attacker, what they try to do is go from an easy exploit to the crown jewels, right? Which we have more and more of that as edge compute with IoT is becoming a very important part of finance companies, you know, doing tele um, uh, checkers, you know, rather yeah. than you know, people. And so us having the ability to also weave in over time our segmentation technologies uh, over the whole WAN and inside the LAN, not based on uh, network topology, but based on business intent, based on yeah. authorized users and devices, preventing the attacker from laterally moving uh, and, and leveraging the intrusion prevention for PCI compliance. There's a lot of different angles there that uh, it is important to have both sides. The other element is you are, the whole reason why you're looking at SD-WAN is because of how data and applications are moving outside your premises to the cloud. And you want the user experience to be great. But you also have to think about that these apps now are gonna be accessed even outside the WAN. So whether the user's on the branch or at a Starbucks, how can you secure the access? And that's something where we're looking holistically to also bring in technologies like multi-factor authentication as a complement to our security services to make sure that anytime you have users connecting to those applications, it's secure. All right. So that, I mean, this is you. You start off with this right place, right security, the right place, uh, and done in a very simplified manner. I think that is that is kind of the core essence of what you're saying, right? Because some of the vendors have pushed us into some architectural approach of doing things just one way, right? Either have all your security in the cloud, or have a UTM appliance, or pull all the security in, in your edge appliance, right? Or send it to a gateway. So. I mean, Cisco's approach is to provide that flexibility of providing the right security at the right place, but making it very still simple and easy to manage. I think that's very, very crucial here because one size doesn't fit all in this SD-WAN security world, right? And that is all our security products. And this doesn't yeah. always happen with our competitors. They yeah. may provide security and that may be industry leader security, but still it is third party. So when the time comes to problems, 
the vendor, SD1 vendor is oh, yeah, one person yeah. and the security yeah. vendor is another person. There's finger pointing that goes on. Yeah. In yeah. case of ours, it is ours. We're the yeah. industry leaders and we will remain industry leaders. Uh, I call that the bolt-on versus the built-in security, right? So security not as an right. afterthought, but thought throughout the process. So that's very crucial there. So uh, I just want to remind the audience, uh, please post your questions on the chat. I've got a couple of questions here uh, that uh, I can start asking here. The first one, uh, Pratik Karyals asks, uh, is SD-WAN going to replace routers? Uh, I think it's uh, one of the favorite questions I get all the time when I'm talking to customers. So, Kareli, you want to take that? No, it is not. We uh, are bringing in the security features onto our enterprise branches, and all our routing platform will support that. The uh, ENCS, which uh, will have the ISR in the virtual form, or the CSR, so over ESXi or KVM, as well as our ISRs, 4,000 series, 1,000 series, as well as our ASR 1K. All of these will support the security features, including the Viptelas V edges, and they will support the stateful firewall with the, their deep packet inspection engine that uh, uses Cosmos. Awesome. So, I mean, the, the idea here is if you are a customer who already has invested in a routing portfolio, we want to provide you that investment protection, right? Correct. So, you do a software upgrade and you get that SD WAN right. capability now with security capability on your existing routing device. If exactly. you want to go with just an appliance only or a V edge, you got that too. Now you have yes. a security capability. You Absolutely. want to go fully virtualized branch platform, you got that with ENCS. If you want to deploy it as a virtual service in the cloud, like a CSR, you got that, right? So, yeah. so the whole idea, again, is to say, what is your philosophy, uh, IT philosophy? What kind of deployment model do you have? And how can we bring that capability without disrupting that while making it very simple for you to manage and, and monitor and control? So that's kind of the thought process that Cisco has had uh, in, in building these uh, capabilities. Um, and another question, I think, Barry, for you, uh, uh, Jose Gonzalez asks, uh, do you have more details around Cisco Talos? I think uh, we can go on for an hour on Cisco Talos here. Uh, oh, but give me your elevator pitch, uh, Barry, on uh, <laughs> what is Cisco Talos and where can uh, our customers find more information? Yeah, well, I mean, they're a team of over 130 folks. Uh, there's like the typical researchers that hunt for threats. There's people that do outreach and partner with uh, government organizations uh, to be able to uh, correlate their information and be able to stop nation states. Uh, they kind of fit all different aspects of how attackers are affecting enterprises. And what their main job, though, for SD-WAN security is to take the telemetry for intrusion prevention, from our advanced malware protection, from mm -hmm. our DNS monitoring, web uh, intelligence, and figure out, like, these are the, the threats that have just emerged proactively or reactively, and get those updates back out to all of our enforcement points. So Corelli talked about the firewall, intrusion prevention, URL filtering, and DNS and web uh, layer security. There is URLs, IPs, domains, files, hashes, and signatures that Talos is responsible for updating. Um, now, what I don't like is throwing big numbers, but we do have some pretty big numbers. I mean, in aggregate, yeah. When you look at our customer base, we'll say stuff that we block 20 billion threats a day. But what it means to an individual customer, what's more valuable than just getting the big number, is that the time for us to detect okay. an emerging threat from one of our customers or even a different product that's not what you've invested in and leveraging that telemetry, analyzing it using the latest machine learning and artificial intelligence and just pure like you know human know-how to and get that back into your product for more effective prevention because you know you guys are the networking guys. You don't want to go investigate things. You have a sock for that, yeah. right? But you got, you want to block as much as possible so you don't have to deal with it. And really, Talos, uh, I mean, it is something that is sometimes hard to evaluate, but through all of our ca customer case studies, they sh understand that, yes, I can get as many bells and whistles from other vendors, but those bells and whistles won't actually mitigate the risk the way that I need to. Yeah, yeah, I think that's 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 the secret sauce, uh, if you ask me, right? So, and and as you said, it's all about the security effectiveness and, and the efficacy of the security, and by providing a proactive or reactive way of providing this threat risk and threat vector, and then giving that intelligence down to the infrastructure and the security portfolio is very huge. 
Um, so that's that's awesome. There's another uh, question <clears throat> on uh, uh, Facebook chat around. I think Miguel Guedes asked. Sorry, Miguel, I may be butchering your last name. Uh, what about NGIPS? Do enterprises need it as well? I think we talked about uh, Snart IPS uh, being supported. Um, do either of you want to take this and say, uh, do you need a separate IPS platform if you have integrated this uh, in the SD-WAN fabric? I'll take that. The uh, IPS solution that we're bringing in as part of SD-WAN security, the capability that we bring in is the, the option to whitelist signatures. If your requirement is to configure your own signatures, or tweak existing signatures, then you would have to go with the uh, next generation IPS, which comes as part of our firepower solution, which we could leverage as part of our ENCS platform, where we could still have the ISRV yeah. on the ENCS, but service chain that with our firepower uh, NGIPS uh, solution, or NGFW awesome. in the virtual form. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, the, those service insertions are really important. I mean, that's a, a main yes. value prop of SD-WAN. You can do that really for any of your security controls. Some customers that are more, uh, you know, conservative or have more compliance requirements may set up regional hubs so that the efficiency of your users connecting your applications are not diminished by having to route it all back to all like way. your yeah. HQ yeah. and DMZ, but you can still be able to get the best of breed uh, flexibility that the SAC, SOC team that you partner with may say that they still needed to have. Cool. And another question, so awesome, I love the questions coming in, some of which we already thought. So Tracy uh, already had that telephony connection with us. So uh, Tracy Thurman Scott says, uh, how does licensing work between SD-WAN and security? I, I think the question they're asking is, do I need to buy 150 licenses <laughs> to get this all going? Or have you guys done anything in terms of simplifying licensing uh, when you want SD-WAN security? So, uh, I have I have heard it loud and clear from our yeah. customers and partners. The entire year of traveling didn't go to waste. We're bringing in all of these security features into one bundle. Customers said, if security is top of mind for Cisco, why not bundle security with the minimum that we need to purchase, and which is exactly what we've done. DNA yeah. Essentials will include all of these features that we talked about all three on-box on-prem. The enterprise firewall that's application aware, intrusion prevention, URL filtering, as well as the cloud integrated feature, monitoring only though. If they need enforcement, an additional umbrella subscription needs to be purchased. And the exact same stack is available on the DNA Advantage pack. And on top of that, they get the advanced sd wan topologies for, let's say, partial mesh, full mesh, as well as the uh, cloud uh, application detection, which is Umbrella's integration with our cloud lock acquisition to be able to provide 30,000 different applications, visibility into that. Well, so, important I mean, to note there, Corelli, is that when there is the integration with Umbrella and what you mentioned with cloud lock, there's no additional steps. This is all out exactly. of the box. Yeah. You yes. add a new SD-WAN router, it automatically is going to get provision in Umbrella so that you get that visibility immediately right. uh, in the cloud. Yeah, yes. so this is, uh, I, I think, uh, this is a pretty important point uh, for us to reemphasize here, right? So typically when you have security, it's like, hey, advanced, right? You got to get a, a separate security license. I mean, the Corellis point is very, very crucial. Just in the essentials package, which is the good, better, best package, is the quote unquote good package, but it has pretty much all of the core key capabilities required all the things that we talked about right in the DNA Essentials package, right? So, and okay. then you have advantage for more advanced segmentation and uh, full partial mesh capabilities, and then you got the DNA Premier, right? So this is awesome uh, to make it very simple for our customers, and these licenses are per device uh, in the branch uh, uh, as we are uh, playing this out. So another uh, thing I think we kind of answered Jerry 100's question. Uh, from YouTube, will V Edge 100 and 1000 routers have all security features mentioned? Um, Corelli, more for you. Yes, I'll take that one. So V Edges will bring in the stateful firewall 
and uh, the cloud, cloud-based umbrella web layer security, where we could intercept the DNS packets and then encrypt them and ship them to umbrella portal. Um, the application uh, deep packet engine that they use is Cosmos, and the VHS will continue to use that, and the stateful firewall and the DPI engine will be separate on those. Those platforms will not get the IPS intrusion prevention system or the on-box UR filtering capability, but they cool. will get the stateful firewall as well as the umbrella layer protection. Awesome. And probably, cool. and Corelli, on that too, you know, a lot of customers that are looking at the V-Edge being a lighter weight software based SD-WAN router, they're probably having a very small office, you know, maybe five, 10 users at a retail mm -hmm. store where there may not be the need for any sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, inbound, outside in sort of IPS that's needed. If everything is just going to be users at that store connecting out to the internet, the IPS becomes less of a need. Yeah, right. very cool. All right, so I think we have time for one more question, and uh, Stay Woke um, gets that chance to ask from YouTube, how will SD-WAN interact with DNA Center? I think this is, uh, I think when we acquired Viptela, uh, I, I think we showed a very clear integration roadmap um, where our, our first focus was to make sure that tele assays can be purchased by the customers without having to go through hoops and jumps, right? So we made sure that's possible. The second thing was to really bring all of the core capabilities and make it run on our iOS XE modular operating system right on the ISR. So we did that a few months back. The third key thing that we've done now is marry the best of both worlds, SD-WAN and security, and still embed that container or native on iOS XE, and we've done that. I think you can see where I'm going with this, right? Uh, exactly. So, <laughs> so the next step is to really see these two domain controllers, DNS Center predominantly for access as the controller, and with Tel Aviv Managed as the controller for WAN coming together into one. So uh, I'm not gonna give you a lot of details uh, on the roadmap, but uh, uh, we've been working on this, and it's going to happen. Uh, but so far, based on all the customer feedback, um, as long as we have the right domain controller with the right functionality, you're very, very happy. And, and the platforms we are built are pretty much open from both sides, so it's easier for us to do that integration. But we are very careful on what the customer needs and wants are today and how we can serve them as fast as possible. So Corelli, not sure uh, in the interest of time, do you want to add anything else? You said it perfectly. Stay tuned. It's All coming. Right. Awesome. Very cool. So this is awesome, folks. Uh, really appreciate, Corelli, Barry, your time. Uh, it's been a pretty exciting time for us uh, here at Cisco, uh, talking to our customers and partners on, on the demand for SD-WAN and the key requirements. And, and I feel we're really excited to see where the market uh, goes and how the solutions are deployed. So that's all the time we have uh, today. Um, we've answered most of the questions that you've had, but feel free to keep posting those questions and uh, we'll answer it uh, offline um, over the next uh, few hours or next few days. So, and as I said, this is always the beginning, right? So we have a very uh, huge pipeline of innovations coming and they're coming at a very fast pace, pretty much every quarter. So keep paying attention and there's a lot more to come. So thanks a lot for taking the time today uh, to listen to us. Thanks a lot, Barry and uh, Corelli, for your time too. And enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Prashant. Thank Everyone's. you, Barry. Thank you.